Hey, what is up? My name is Rubidium. Today we're looking at strange film lingo that you may or may not know that may be from the US where I work now or Australia where I started making films. I have an ulterior motive for this video. Uh, I want to send it to people that I'm going to be working with so they understand what I'm saying. Um, and if anyone else can get something from it, then that's great too. A lot of these things, when I first heard, I had to either ask what they meant or go home and look them up. They're not very self-explanatory, but they're good terms to know nonetheless. Super basic, but super important and something that I see misused a lot. And it's about camera movement. So the camera pushes forward, pulls back, dollies left, dollies right, cranes up, cranes down, pans left, pans right, tilts up, tilts down, zooms in, zooms out, and maybe dutches left or dutches right, meaning tilting the whole camera uh, off an angle or on an axis. But apart from that, don't use other made up things because no one is gonna understand what you say. If I tell a DP that I, I want a shot that kind of punches in, then crawls around and then crabs backwards. And then, you know, no one is going to know what you mean. This brings me to the pointies, the pointies, the pointies are shots of the director on set pointing at things, which sounds totally ridiculous, but uh, you need it for your EPK or your electronic press kit so that when you send a picture of yourself directing, people know that you're the director, the DP or the actor will be by your side and you'll be like looking off to the distance pointing at something. Google famous directors names, you'll almost always find um, their version of the pointies. It's pretty fun. The Zolly. The Zolly is the zoom dolly. So you zoom in or you zoom out as you push in. Um, I always knew it as the Hitchcock or as the Vertigo, um, but Zolly is another name that comes up, which probably is more descriptive of what it is. A stinger. A stinger is just an extension cord. It's a fancy tough guy name for an extension cord. The Martini. The Martini is the final shot of the day. It's the last shot you're doing before uh, you wrap for the day. So it's the last one planned. Take the Martini with a grain of salt there may be always, there's almost always another shot to come. A recce uh, is short for reconnaissance and it's the British term or Australian term for um, a location scout. Going on recce means going and scouting the location before you go to shoot there so you know what it looks like, how to get in and out of it, um, how to deal with it, how to light it, uh, how to block it, all those things. 86 it or deep nine it uh, means to get rid of it, destroy it, kill it, uh, let it go. Um, not sure where that one came from. I'm doing some real research. If anyone has any ideas, leave the um, answer in the comments. The cowboy shot um, is somewhere between a medium close-up and a wide, which shows the person from just above their knees to the top of their head. So it would be, um, if you're a cowboy, it would show the guns, which is the important part. Um, you tend to do a lot of these on movies or steady cams because um, you can always crop in later if you're shooting 4K or you're on film. Um, and it means that you don't uh, lose any information. Redheads and blondes are lights. The redhead is a 650 watt and the blonde is a thousand watt. I think it was originally um, 650s were, had it came in a red case and blondes uh, were in a white or a yellow case. MOS means to shoot a scene without sound. I have heard that it it was from a German director, Mit und Sund, or whatever the German term would be. Maybe someone can tell me. Um, I've heard other people say it stands for different things, but it basically means leave the sound department at home, go and shoot the scene or the shot uh, just with the camera. Shooting MOS means you can move a lot faster. You can get more done. Turnaround is... Uh, something that gets used a lot on American sets because of the union rules. Say you go OT or overtime by three or four or five hours. So you were meant to wrap at six and you end up wrapping at midnight. Um, but the call the next day, the time you ask everyone to be there is 6 a.m. Now, if people have an hour commute to get home, um, that means they're not going to have long enough to sleep for a reasonable amount of time and then get back to set and it can become a danger. It means you're asking people to drive when they're chronically tired and that is a very easy way um, to injure people. 
um, and get into car accidents. So the turnaround means that you can have eight or 10 or 12 hours turnaround, meaning if you wrap at midnight, then the next call, the call for the next day can't be any earlier than 8, 8 a.m. Uh, MacGuffin uh, is something actually from screenwriting. It's what everyone in the movie, uh, the characters in the movie are looking for. It can be a roll of microfilm, it can be a atomic trigger, it can be uh, a small child with psychic abilities, or it can be um, a witness to a murder. It can be a person, it can be a thing, it can just be a number or an idea. It's what people are chasing. I think in good films, it does matter what the MacGuffin is. Uh, if the MacGuffin is just a black box uh, or a crystal skull or a Lost Ark, you know, it could be anything. It, I like it better when the MacGuffin is actually something that people, uh, that has a role to play rather than just being something that's handed around. Another one from screenwriting is the 10 and 10. That means to read the first 10 and last 10 pages of a screenplay so that you can pretend that you've read it when people ask you about it. You can have a plausible opinion about the material without actually having to put the time in. Not a very respectful way to treat uh, the work someone's put their heart and soul into, but better than not reading anything at all. The dirty single uh, sounds kind of X-rated. It's actually getting a shot of one person talking to another person and leaving a little bit of the person that they're talking to in the frame. So it gives a sense of depth, it gives a sense of presence of that, the, the person listening. Um, it's a nice way of shooting single person dialogue without making it seem too, too much like a soap opera. It makes it feel more cinematic. Uh, French Hours, uh, something that I've heard about in Australia, but not so much in the States, which is where there's no lunch. There's no lunch hour and people from the um, craft services department will just come and ask everyone who's working when they have a second and they're not um, actively engaged in the shoot what they'd like for lunch or what they want for a snack and just kind of bring them food uh, as the day goes on. I heard that they'd used it on um, The Pacific, the TV show that they shot in Australia. I think there might be um, issues around it with some unions in the States. We have a really big cast and crew where lunch doesn't technically start until the last person from the cast and crew has sat down. And if you have 40 or 50 people on set, that might take an hour. So uh, lunch would go for two hours and you end up losing a lot of light, and a lot of time, and a lot of money. So French hours are a way of maybe increasing your catering costs, but cutting down on your um, overtime. French coverage is, I don't know why all these things are French. French coverage is uh, shooting two people talking in, um, from behind. So rather than uh, the camera in front of the people, it's from behind them shooting across their shoulders. The uh, singles can be clean or dirty, um, but it's usually used um, two people on a park bench in sort of like a spy thriller way because it um, obscures who they are, or more often um, in the back of a car shooting over the shoulder of the people um, who are either driving or talking in the front. And finally, cheating or cheating it or let's cheat it means we are going to do something that uh, we're going to use the magic of film to cover up something that could be difficult or dangerous or hard. It's not really like a stunt. Um, it's just shooting around a limitation. So famously, the original Robocop suit cost a million dollars to make. But for whatever reason, when Robocop walked, the, the armor on his butt kind of like bobbed up and down. So if you watch the original Robocop, they cheated around that by never quite shooting Robocop from behind or when they did having something in the way that kind of hit his butt like a police car. But you cheat on set a lot. Sometimes you don't want to um, relight the whole other side of the room. So you get the actors in a two person dialogue to swap places um, and then move them over a little bit, move the camera a little bit, you cheat it um, and then you cheat the eye line, and if it works, which it sometimes does, you can shoot your whole other side of the dialogue without actually having to move the camera or many of the lights, just adjust things and cheat the second half. That's a couple of film terms that I've picked up along the way in the years that I've been doing this that I've found really helpful. Hopefully, uh, if I've sent you <laughs> due to this uh, video uh, and we're gonna be working together, you'll know what the hell I'm talking about when we're on set. For everybody else, Hopefully you'll use these in your own work um, and yeah, leave some more in the comments. I would love to hear what you guys are saying out there.